Hey, Ms. Bahak here, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to really quickly edit a video podcast that was filmed on a phone or an iPad and recorded with the Zoom app. So basically, once I have my one MP4 file, which I was provided, I'm going to open up Premiere Pro, and you can drag and drop your files into this area or in this area right over here. I've done that. It's rendered a little bit. The first step that I like to go ahead and do is fix some of the audio before I go start trimming and putting my blade through all of these clips, right? So I'm gonna make sure that the full clip is selected here. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna hit the audio section and then normally this will pop up. So you're gonna hit dialogue. And the first area that I like to play with is this loudness, okay? So in the loudness section, I'm just gonna hit auto match. Give it a couple seconds to kind of do its thing. It's working on it. We're going to move down over to clarity. Okay, so in the clarity section, I'm just going to tap this. And then the other effect I'm going to apply is the EQ right here. So adjust the frequency response of a recording. And I'm also going to change it to uh, podcast voice. All right, if I had individual tracks, because there's three speakers here, I would go ahead and maybe do subtle boost for male and female and things like that. But podcast voice is pretty good if you select that. And just to check back up top here, as you can see, it's auto matched it to a specific loudness. So that way now everything is very consistent uh, or close to it throughout the clip. Now, um, be careful as you are scrolling down to not change anything else too much. Now I'm going to basically hit this to close it. And uh, we're gonna hit reduce noise because there's sometimes background noise that can be going on. We don't need it to be too heavy though, right? So we can toggle it and make it lower here. If we need to make it even heavier, you jack it up top to the, there. But um, I bring it down to right about there. If there's some more hissing caused by cables and you know acs and heaters and things like that there's a couple effects here okay so ds so harsh sounds like box right if that's like that is happening a lot you can hit that button here and jack it up uh, or down d hum so low frequency sounds electrical interference that's happening um, that's good to toggle sometimes and keep it here and then reduce rumble so this can be an effect that if it's needed, if somebody's audio is really bad, you go ahead and turn that on. Keep in mind for all of these effects that you apply and turn on, it adds, it makes the file bigger, right? So when you export it, you just need to be cognizant of that. It's going to take a little bit more time and it's going to take up a little bit more storage. Um, clip volume, this is where you can kind of turn up even more if you want. So a way I like to test this, if you just go hit play, we want the this bar to go up to green to yellow, okay? Not too much into the red. So um, that's pretty good, but if I needed to really jack it up more, obviously I would put it up here. And then let's say you're working with two tracks sometimes, like I have another audio track, I could mute it completely um, by tapping this button here. So I make all those adjustments to kind of the dialogue, right, first. And then after that, what I'm gonna do is now dive into the timestamps that I've been given to uh, remove certain parts throughout this episode. And this is another reason why if you added stuff already, it would mess up the timings that you may be communicating with somebody else, the timestamps. So that's why working with the raw file first like this before adding stuff can be uh, useful. So we're going to go into about 220. You can also drag it up top here. So you can do it here or up top in the timeline here. We can pull it around to kind of find that area. Okay, right there, let's say. Maybe even more. Right around there is where I'm ready to kind of cut it. I could go even closer. Perfect, right there. So now I'm going to select the clip. I'm going to right click. Actually, I'm not going to right click. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this tool right here. It's the razor tool. A shortcut for this is C. It's very helpful to know. So I'm going to tap C and I'm just going to go ahead and blade that right there. V is what you hit uh, to come back to this selector tool right here. And then basically I'm going to go ahead and delete that section because they didn't want that. Something that you can do if you tap this area right here, and if I were to hit delete, it's going to 
remove that empty space, which is really, really nice when you're making a lot of cuts, ums, ahs, and things like that. The reason I'm not going to delete that right now is because I'm using the timestamp still provided to me to actually cut this. So it would throw off the timestamps if I started deleting. So I'm going to leave that empty space and kind of move on to the next edit. And do you see how sometimes here you can see when there's empty space for a kind of beginning? I'm going to the end here first, as you can see, but nine. So that at 902, it started at an um, right? So that's something that I can eliminate, right? No need right there to keep that. So you just want to double check sometimes timestamps that you're given because it, you know, you might be able to cut out some extra stuff. So right over there, I'm going to go ahead and make a trim, hit C, tap that, then hit V. Okay, and now I'm going to pull myself back to go ahead and find that first spot, which was about 720, I believe. And you can see it right here in the wave pattern, right? It starts to kind of flatline here, which means they're quiet. So that makes sense. They're about to restart. And right over here to where he's about to, I'm going to go ahead and hit C, trim that area again, hit V to deselect. And now take a look. It's this middle section that we were looking to chop out. It's about a minute and 13 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. All right, let's move on to the next edit. Let's go to 1645. Boom, that exact timestamp. So we hit that just before 1645. Uh, hit V to come back to the selector tool. And now you've got your middle section ready to cut out again. Boom, edit done. Next up is 4040 to 4119. You get really good at reading kind of these waves a little bit, right? You can kind of guess without even listening where somebody starts. I'm making it right there. Okay, yep. So see, I could have jumped to this flat line, but it doesn't make sense. That's why you need to kind of listen to it because this was important. And there's barely a breath here before he kind of gets started. So I need to make that a sensitive cut, right? Uh, boom, boom. And we are good to go there, all right? So take a look now. You've got this big chunk that is being removed, okay, from what we just did. And now I have my final edit. Really at the end, sometimes there's some off time where the guest and you know the speaker talk. So we just wanna kind of make sure we cut that out uh, when they close. Okay, so this part right here, thank you, appreciate it, is all we need. Yeah, thank you guys, appreciate it. Okay, so this is part because see, he's there's not much empty space here. There's no breath that we can use. Uh, so we need to kind of back it up a tiny bit before that even begins. So I'm gonna, boom, hit that. V, select this, and delete. And let's just real quick listen to it. Perfect. All right. So that is how we trim now all these unwanted parts that we wanted in this episode. And when we zoom out, you can see these couple edits here. So now I'm going to show you how you can join them together very easily. And because if you drag and drop them, that's one way, but it, it takes a little longer. You just tap in the middle of that empty space, hit delete, boom, delete, boom, tap right here, boom, hit delete, and then tap in the middle hit delete. And now it has been joined together into one cohesive piece of material. Now, even though I have made all the trims necessary in this piece, something that I want to do is go back and re-listen at each connection point, because sometimes there's still an extra second or two that you could trim off. Like here, that's some dead space. If I look at it, that could be removed. It, it doesn't necessarily need to be there. I could listen to it to double check, right? But it's really an um, and I just did check. So I would, I would knock that out. Now, once some of those things are double checked and you are good to go, what we wanna do for this video is add an intro and an outro. Okay, so I just dragged the outro, which is the end screen for this video, um, over to the end here. Bring that closer, good. All I wanna do for this, I really wanna make sure the music is matched because there's music in this and it's very loud, so I'm not even gonna uh, play it for you right now. But we hit audio, we're gonna go into music, and we're going to hit loudness and hit auto match. Okay, so this is going to kind of bring it down and equalize it a little bit. Something you want to keep here in mind if you are speaking over 
it. So if there was a speaker over this, then what we're going to do is select ducking. Okay. There isn't for this one, so I'm not going to, but ducking is what would allow you to make sure that music is fainter and the speaker is a little bit louder so you can hear them the whole time. Um, we'll hit play. Good. That's not too bad. If you looked at the levels over here, it wasn't in red or yellow. The one edit that I'm glad it just did when I dragged and dropped that, that I need to make is zoom out on this clip because see, it's being cut off. So I'm going to double tap after this is selected. I hit double tap and now I can basically pinch if I, uh, you know, different shortcuts on each computer, but on the MacBook here, what we're going to do is just center that clip. So see how I'm zooming in, zooming out. These little corners you can use to go, you know, pull in or out. And basically we just want to make sure that it fits. There's no black space, just like that, okay? And then make sure to click out of it so it doesn't mess around and move it around again because it does do that sometimes. So you're good to go for this part right here. All right, now we are going to add the intro over to the beginning of the sequence. I'm gonna drag myself over here and I'm gonna cut out this little middle, boom. And now we have consolidated uh, the clip. Something to keep in mind here, um, before I drag these other elements into this area, sometimes you may wanna export a rough MP3 uh, cut of this, right? So um, basically before I would have put this intro and outro in, because I have different intros and outros for the audio version here, um, I'm gonna, let's say, delete that, and then I would go ahead and delete this ending right here. And then basically once I would delete those two, I would come up top here. Let's say it's ready to export. I'm gonna go hit export, media. I'm going to select MP3. Boom. Once you select that, now you can hit Q or export. I like hitting Q because it goes to the media encoder here, and then you hit play to begin kind of that export process. And what that basically does is it allows you to continue working in the Premiere Pro workspace versus just letting it export, uh, and that would be the only action it's allowed to do. So having a rough MP3 cut is important is because you can then take all of these edits that you've made and now take this file and put it into Adobe Audition um, to make further customizations for the audio version if you needed to. But as for the video version, let's say I have those intros and outros added. And remember in the outro here, something to highlight is that we just make sure that there's an end screen, right? So we can basically plug in this um, area two videos. So this still photo that you have of these two, um, we basically have a video on this side here and a video on this side here. So it's basically recommended videos that if they watch this one, they made it to the end, what else would they like to keep them uh, engaged in watching? Anyways, we're gonna apply the same effect. You're gonna hit uh, music for the intro. I'm going to hit auto match and that should do it there. You can listen to it, test it, make sure it's good. But, oh, here's something good that we checked. It is too big. Again, it didn't, for whatever reason, sometimes it does that. We're going to double tap here, the clip, and then I'm just going to pinch to zoom just like that until all these corners kind of line up and hit play and see how that is the exact width and height that it's supposed to be. Click out to make sure I've preserved those changes. Make sure you save your projects periodically. I didn't do that throughout this video, I should have. Um, but once that is done, I'm ready to go ahead and export the video version. And I'm just gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna hit File, Export, Media, and then we're gonna switch this over to H.264, okay? And then match source high bit rate is you're usually good there. Output name, this is something that I would change. So this is just kind of like a default name of the file that you started with. So I would remember show initials, episode number, and then we'll go final video. Great, saves it to my downloads. You can leave all these pretty unchecked, right? If you hit export button here, you're gonna have to wait. You won't be able to work inside of Premiere Pro um, until it's fully done. But see how it's about you know almost three gigabytes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Q. And now this is gonna pull this and open it up in the media encoder. So um, 
in the media encoder, you are basically able to hit play. See, it's opening the project over here. And as soon as it kind of populates, I'm ready to hit play. And then it starts kind of doing its thing. And uh, when it's done, it'll let you know. And then you can go back into Premiere Pro. Uh, I could continue working here. I could close the project. Uh, I could do whatever I want. So basically, just to review what we did, we added an intro. We added an end screen. We trimmed out unwanted parts from this video. Um, we added a bunch of things to the audio aspect to reduce background noise, harsh frequencies, and things like that. Um, and then also enhance just the... Uh, overall quality of the audio. Um, so this was a great example because there weren't too many other files and tracks that I had to play with. It was one MP4 file that's filmed on the iPad that Zoom gives you, and you know you can do the best that you can with that. So I hope this was useful. If you have any questions at all, make sure to drop them in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Um, and if you enjoyed what you saw today, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and check out some of these other ones that I think you'll like too.